Well, good morning, YouTube. It has been a little while since I've tried to shoot a video because I'm still backlogged at the moment on footage that I haven't edited. So, I haven't been shooting new video because I didn't really want to be even more backlogged than I was, but thought that this one might be a little bit uh, interesting to share with you, and what we're going to get into today is three evaporator coils. Um, we've got three Lennox systems that are all leaking. They're all still under warranty and all of them are going to get new evaporator coils and new filter dryers and then recharged and checked with the I-manifold. Got about a 30 minute drive ahead of us. Put us arriving at about 8.15 and I will expect to be there all day. I did some I manifold projects with the updated application the last time I was there and one of the nice things about the iManifold projects with the new application is that when you go back you can go find that original project and it will dump all of your customer information and model and serial number in for at least one piece of equipment and if I recall correctly I did three separate projects each labeled for the area that the equipment serves. And that's one thing that I've been meaning to talk to Imperial about is that it would be nice to be able to add more than one piece of equipment per project. Um, be able to select the system and do your reporting per system without having to have separate projects and on a commercial application it would make a lot of sense because of the fact that you could have many many units on one location and you could just label them accordingly either by the labeling that is on the equipment you know number one two three four or whatever a b c d whatever it is you could label them accordingly that would be a nice feature but i'll quit talking I'm going to sit in traffic, looks like, and uh, we'll uh, try to put something together for the rest of the video. Otherwise, you'll never see this video. Because if I don't get anything shot, I'm not going to do a talk about something that I didn't shoot. So, snap my fingers and I'm there. Alright, so we're starting on the recovery. Got three units here. Got one for downstairs and then bonus room and attic. I don't remember which one was which, but rather than pumping the systems down to change the evaporator, since they've all been leaking, I wanted to know how much refrigerant was left in them and be able to put back the factory charge and then add from there show you the crawl space not a crawl space this is a, a nice one actually but here we are we've got a horizontal Lennox G51 Billy Noth will appreciate that one with a horizontal evaporator coil about a four foot plenum and then a two foot return plenum 90% furnace 
with a condensate pump on it. This one's going to be the worst, so that's the first one I'm starting on. That horizontal coil does not come out of the cabinet very nicely. So I'm going to play with that one first. All of the refrigerant pipes have got some good slack in them down here. Currently, all of the filter dryers are exterior, and most of them are buried in the mulch. So I'm going to move all of those inside. This one will be here at the coil. The other two will be in the attic, close to the coil for the one unit, and then close to the air handler coil for the other. But that's what we're getting into right now. The customer has got to leave to take their kids to school. So I've got free reign of outside and crawl space. But with three units to recover, it should give me plenty of work to do until they come back. They said they wouldn't be long though. So that's where we're starting. We'll uh, check in along the way. Well, this one only had about one pound 13 ounces in it maybe two pounds by the time you get what's left in the hoses after recovery but um, yeah not a whole lot of refrigerant in this one one pound 13 we'll move on to the second one and then get the third one here in a minute well the second unit only has one pound three and a quarter ounces So, obviously that one's not in very good shape either. Well, no all-day service repair would seem to go right if uh, everything went right. The coil for downstairs, they sent me an A cabinet, and I need a B cabinet. Um, checking my notes but definitely should have been a B cabinet and I don't think that uh, it would be something that I have done wrong um, trying to figure out where the heck I'm going Did I turn left, turn right? I don't know. But, um, yeah, so I gotta go grab uh, a different coil for the one that I was starting on because I knew it was gonna be a pain in the butt. So I guess it's a good thing I started on it because it would have been that much worse if I had not. My... Equipment info is CH3336B. So, Turn right on green level I had the correct information and it must have been transposed somewhere else. But all in all, it doesn't really seem to be going too poorly at the moment. So, that's positive. Continue 2.1 miles. We'll check in here right after a while. Well, we got our coil. And that reminds me, I should probably double check. Right back. Yeah, we got the right coil now. Um, since I haven't split open the units, I went ahead and got uh, the proper piston for one unit, and then they didn't have the proper piston for another unit, so I went ahead and picked up a TXV to match that system. And um, if I don't end up needing them because the devices are properly matched, then we'll be fine. But I didn't want to get there, crack open the metering device and find out that I had the wrong metering device for a good matchup. Especially if we're going through the trouble of doing all of this, there's no sense in 
screwing ourselves because when we double checked the metering devices on all of the evaporator coils, they were all wrong by the factory piston or metering device to match up with the condensers. We've got the one I'm working on first is a three ton evaporator on a two and a half ton condenser and it comes with a 73 piston but requires a 70 to match up with the two and a half ton condenser. Um, the air handler in the attic is supposed to have a TXV but I could swear I did not see one when I was looking at it previously. So, definitely wanted to make sure that I wasn't uh, caught up having to make another trip. So, that's where we're at at this point. We'll uh, keep you updated as we go along. Alright, so I opened up the evaporator piston for the two and a half ton system down here in the crawl space and I found a .067 piston. The coil comes with a .073 not that you'll be able to read that and requires a .065 or a TXV. Since I don't have a .065 I'm going to use the TXV. So I'm glad I got it. We've got the old coil out over here. Got the cabinet waiting for the new coil. And the coil comes glued to the drain pan when it's in a cased coil situation. So I'm going to go ahead and use the new coil drain pan since it's glued to it instead of trying to stick it back to that old one um, there is this nasty little retainer clip right there right here that holds in the drain pan and it's supposed to be removed before it's installed so that you can actually get into the coil in the future and it was a bear but I got it out I can't get it loose because it's actually pinched between the metal of the furnace flange and the coil but I was able to get it out of the way so that it won't obstruct the pan as I bring in the new coil. So that's what I'm going to do next, slide the new coil in and uh, start working on my sealed system. We've got the reverse bender attachment on the Hillmore. Going to make this a simple process one-handed operation once you got it set up anyway and uh, there we are we got a 90 to turn into the coil and then we'll swage the end open a little bit to fit inside the 7 8 fitting at the suction line well just goes to show that even with a few years of experience brazing you can still make mistakes when you've got a piece of pipe that's not in the greatest shape. This section right here burned right through. So we have to cut it out and see if we can fix it. Well, you can believe me or not, but this old coil, when I took it apart, had no piston. None whatsoever. The air handler is supposed to come with the TXV. And um, when I told the parts house that I didn't get a TXV or I didn't remember seeing a TXV, they said that that was impossible. <laughs> but evidently it isn't because there's no piston in there. I just took it apart and that's what I found. No piston. So this unit has been running for almost five years 
with no piston. 